when humans finally fly to an asteroid, they will need the same skills that they do now. They must be able to use technology to perform science and exploration. However, there is something more. They're going to need some new technology. Initially, we're going to have to be able to find this asteroid, so very precise guidance and navigation. And then we're going to have to park close to an asteroid without hitting it, and that's going to be something that needs to be developed. And uh, thirdly, once the humans need to go on the surface of the asteroid, they're going to need the new spacesuits capable of anchoring it, uh, themselves onto the surface because such a small gravitational field is, uh, is going to be very, very hard to explore. So some of the technologies that I just talked about are partially available today. We do have spacesuits, but we must be developing new ones in order to, uh, to be able to perform the kind of tasks that are going to be necessary for exploration and exploitation of an asteroid. And for the spacecraft, we already have navigation system. We already have, for example, our, uh, our spacecraft to the International Space Station. But in the future, this new spacecraft will have to be able to do that on, on when connected to a completely unexplored little world like an asteroid. Space is an inherently risky environment, and obviously flying to an asteroid is going to present all the same risks that you have flying in space. And uh, all those are, everything that is in the unknown is always uh, an increase in the risk. Today, we are preparing for these missions using analogs environment. One of these environments is called NEMO, the NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations. It's where we stay underwater in a small environment for two weeks in a habitat that's called Aquarius, about 20 meters underwater. When we are in this environment and we stay there for the whole time underwater, we perform the same tasks uh, that we would perform on an asteroid and we take advantage of the neutral buoyancy of being underwater to simulate the microgravity environment that we would find on an asteroid. Nowadays, when we perform our missions on, on, the space, on the International Space Station, it's a very known environment that was designed to be, um, to be uh, used with uh, uh, handholds and uh, uh, specific places where we can anchor ourselves in order to operate. When we go to an asteroid, we won't have any of those tools. We are going to bring our own and to install them in order to be able to explore and navigate around the asteroid. When we land one day on that asteroid, the lucky person is going to feel something that has never been done before. He's going to be standing on a very, very tiny world with a very small horizon rotating in the universe. It's going to feel that the whole universe is rotating about you. And I think that that's part of the beauty of it, that we just don't know what it's going to feel like.